Okay, for the purposes of this short video, we're going to learn how to quickly import and use the example service templates that are in the package. Uh, what we have in the package is a handful of XML files, which are the actual service templates that you'll import into your environment. And then we have a folder for some standard scripts that I use in a lot of my templates that will use a, a few scripts for these. And then, of course, the README doc, which should have some pretty good instructions and use cases. We're making some kind of assumptions here that you already have uh, the fabric set up. Things like uh, the VIP template, which would be a requirement for network load balancing um, and some additional uh, obviously basic configurations. What I'm going to do here is take the standard script file and put it into my VMM library. So I'll actually go into the library. I do this a little bit different than, than um, using the console um, configurations. I'll explore my library and you see that it opens up here. Go back to my uh, extracted folder and I'm going to grab that entire standard scripts folder drop it into the library and just copy it over. I'll go back to my library in Virtual Machine Manager and do a quick refresh just to make sure that the scripts get discovered and I can go ahead and then use those in the service templates that I'm going to be importing. Let's go back to um, my actual service templates and here I'm going to import. You see I've already got a few imported. I'm going to go ahead and import um, the service template for the three-tier environment. And I'm just pointing back to the folder and actually the XML file with that. And then during the, the import wizard, it's going to ask me to map back to some of my local resources, uh, some things that the template's looking for. And of course, they all map back correctly in my environment because they're all here. And in your environment, you'll have a handful of things you'll need to change. For example, uh, the actual VHDX files that are used. I have two here. Uh, one is the um, normal Windows operating system VHD, and the other one is the SQL Server SysPrep VHD. And then also you see it's uh, looking for the system run as account and then the VIP template, which was created. And to simply map back to your environment and your VIP templates, and you'll just select the, the modify button and select the right networks, VIP templates, or whatever um, need be. I'm also going to recommend um, that if you import these multiple times, that obviously you, you manage the release versions of these. So I'm going to, since I've already had a, one of these imported, I'm going to change this to version 2. And this is also going to be my working version that I'm going to modify. Once that's completed, you'll see now I have actually two of the base tiers. And you'll see that one's the version 2 that I imported. Now before I can actually use these, I need to make some changes to the actual template itself that's more specific to my environment. Right click on the template, open designer, and we'll make those necessary changes. You can see in this environment, I was able to import and it came in with all three tiers of this web service. And I'm only going to walk through deploying or changing the three tier version since the two tier and the one are all the same, just obviously minus one to one tier. Um, so you'll see it came in uh, with the load balancer and the VIP template, which was required for the load balancer. Uh, that had some unique configurations in the scalable front end web tier. So we'll jump into that one first. One of the first things that I actually have to do is to uh, join each of these tiers uh, to the domains that they're going to be um, deployed to. For example, if you have a development lab where your developers are, are uh, publishing these or requesting these and, and they're going into the lab, you may offer them their own Active Directory, DNS entries, things like that, and we'll want to join to those servers. Uh, I don't see a need to actually add Active Directory servers to each template and deploy one at a time. 
just have one for the, the development environment and then let them manage and maintain that. And you could do that through a template, but my recommendation is just to have a... Uh, so we'll make start making those changes by going into the OS configuration of the template for the, the actual web tier. And you can see when I look at the networking, there's no domain. So in my environment, I'm using the Contoso domain. And we'll go ahead and join that. And then you can also have a run as account set up for your domain join account. Um, since you need to actually have an account that can do that, you can use the administrator, of course. I have one set up. And I'll go ahead and just add that here. It's not actually set up as a run as. It's just an individual account that has access to do that. I'll need to do this to each one of the uh, tiers. Um, but in this environment, let me just show you a couple other things real quick. In the hardware configuration, uh, one of the differences in the scalable web tier or the front end tier is that it's using the static IP pool as well as MAC address spoofing. So that's going to be a requirement for my NLB that I'm using. That's already set up in the features and roles set up, so it's ready to go with IIS configurations and inst installations of these features that are going to be required. So that's really all I wanted to do is set that domain join account up. I'm going to go ahead and close this particular tier of the service template, and then I'm going to make the other changes to um, the other two tiers. But before I do that, I want to highlight a couple things inside the SQL tier that you'll also have to make sure that you manage or that you change before SQL will deploy. Since I'm using my own sysprepped image or SQL um, preparation, you'll need to go in into your environment and modify some of the SQL configurations. For example, um, what's the instance name that you had uh, created your SQL image with. Um, you also need for uh, the location of the media source you copied over to this image before it was saved. I've added already a default user to be added to the server administrators, so you'll need to remove this and add one of your own. Since it'll fail if this is obviously not your domain or one of your users, you'll need to remove this one and add one of your own. And then we'll go back in and add this particular system to the domain as well. Obviously, the domain that um, the user I was using is the one that I'll need. Otherwise, that will also fail. So we'll go ahead and complete this. And then that's all I really need here. Any customizations like you might have for answer files that modify um, firewalls or make changes, um, you can do. This is uh, already defaulted to only one instance and a maximum of two. Make the changes that you need. It is marked scalable. If you imported it and you didn't have a VIP template available, you won't see the VIP load balancer added. Uh, so you'll actually need to make sure that you uncheck the fact that it's scalable and then modify the um, IP address on the server on that tier so that it's now going to get one dynamically. That's all we really need to do there. I'm going to select uh, configure deployment and then it'll actually um, reach out to the host and, and try to find a good location for them. Before, while it's doing that, let me just talk a little bit more about some of the other scripts that are here. Um, and again, these are ones that I just created and use, and I try to control um, exit codes and manage the scripts a little bit with logging and where they're logging to. Um, so you saw, for example, the website and app pool creation or modification. I have one that do, just does the standard default website delete, creates a new one, uses a default app pool. I also have enabling PowerShell scripts. A uh, good use case for this uh, is if you're going to run a PowerShell through your service templating, you might want to go ahead and add uh, the execution policy for that. I do this in a script instead of directly in the command line again, so I can control the exit code and some of the logging. And in this particular script, I make it remote signed, but you can also uh, 
uh, open it wide up if you want to, if you're going to be doing um, remote administration. For example, in a development lab, you might want it opened up so that you can have access to it. So in the uh, configuring deployment, it's going to ask me, uh, obviously, what I want to name it. And I'm going to, instead of selecting a cloud, I'm actually just going to pick the all host and let it try to find what's what's available and what's good for that. Then it's asking me those those parameter names or setting names that I asked for. Uh, so for the IIS site, I'm going to actually just give that a name and you can see it's already defaulted to a couple of items. So the BMM service account is already defaulted to uh, my VMM service name. That's the service that's running the virtual machine manager on the virtual machine manager server. That'll need local admin access to this scalable server, so that's why that's there. So now all there really is to do is to click deploy service. Another confirmation of that. If I wanted to script that, you can see that the scripting is um, all PowerShell is all available to me just by selecting the script. I might, for example, instead of use the ID, use the name, make some modifications to the overall script. But uh, since GUIDs aren't that fun to follow and track down, but I'm going to go ahead and just click deploy, start the deploy process. So once it's switched over and started the task of deployment, we can go back into the VMM console, pull up the jobs and see that the job for creating the service is running. Okay, we can see that the service completed successfully. Have our summary of some of the changes that took place. Which BHDs, what are they named? Things like the IP address for the VIP template that was issued will be here. We can actually go into VMs and services and see that my sample tier, three tier app is deployed. Each tier is running. Since my front end tier is load balanced, I can actually scale that tier out and multiply the number of servers that I'd like to have. Recall the settings, I believe, was two. You can obviously increase that to what you need. And that's really all there is. Now at this point I can offer this up to the development team.